Okay, so let's start turning the blues maybe melody song into something that's more my own. And I think building up this way is better than creating something my own from scratch because the stepper device, which you looked at in the last video, I haven't fully explored the possibilities of that. Previously, it was just turning things on or off, but we can actually use the range of values there uh, to do different things for this video. I'd also like to do that before getting into more complicated things with the formula device, exploding phrases, uh, targeting things such as scaling key, or even tackling how I would craft the song structure, if that's even possible by using a uh, seeding in this manner. And we'll find that out when we get to it. But for now, I'd like to start by removing those pesky re-triggers in the hi-hats. If you watched the last video, then you'll remember it was restricting the seed number to multiples of four, and I'd like to get rid of that and just be able to use any seed number that I want. And by the way, a handy thing here is that when you select the percentage, it's actually going to show you in the macro what step will be used. As long as you only select one thing. As you can see here, if you select more than one thing, it's just going to show the same percentage as on the slider. Anyway, let's start using new versions of the steppers to produce some more variance within the instruments. When it comes to the panning, I'm not going to target the hi-hat. That has its own random variance going on there, as well as the dit and the glock, and the pad has its own uh, path that it takes through the stereo field every time the note is played. For the rest though, I think I'll leave the actual guaranteed notes, because the song is built around that. But for the others, which were the old YZ0 maybe command that we altered last time, they're fair game. And for this, we have a new version of the trusty script used to create the steppers. There's a couple of differences though, because unlike the volume domain, which essentially goes from 0 up to 1 in the panning and the pitch domains, you have the central point and you're either going above or below this. So the operator, when you insert things via the API, by default, this is multiply, which is fine for 0 or 1. But for the variety of values, we need it to be plus so that you get the exact value from the center point. And likewise, we also need this to be bipolar. Because otherwise, you get this. And when it's like this in unipolar mode, you're mapping the values from 0 to 1. But like I said, we have the central point here, so we need this to be mapped from minus 1 to 1. And to demonstrate the difference, it's very easy to show in the pitch domain, and I'll do that just now. Now, the calculation here might look strange because you're thinking the central point must be 0 0.5. And that's true, but I'm creating a range of values here. It's one tenth of the full range. I don't want things to be all the way right or left. But uh, since the lowest value can be 0, that's 0 0.45. And in the middle of that range will be 0 0.5. So this all works out. Let's also do this for the pitch domain, but just with a much smaller amount of variance. If this were a melodic instrument, I wouldn't be touching this at all. But since I'm just going to be applying this to percussion samples, this small amount is absolutely fine. Now, what's left for the modulation section? 
are the three domains activated when you choose a filter type. And the decimator is always fun. So, let's put in some steppers for those. Cool, now let's take everything I've done for this kick instrument and apply it, where appropriate, to the other percussion instruments. And let's see how that sounds. Okay, right, I actually hooked that up knowing how the decimator works and gave it the most extreme settings, the widest range of 0 to 1, thinking it would come across as really stupid, but <laughs> actually sounds kind of fucking great. That was unexpected. And speaking of unexpected, here's something that I recently found out, which is that no matter the combination of odd steps and lengths, no matter what they're going to be, it's always going to take the same amount of steps to cover all of the steps within the pattern. So, if I make a change here, and to here, that's still going to take 256 steps, to cover all of the 256 steps. And no matter what you set this to, as long as they're not evenly divisible, it always takes the same amount. I assumed that you would get some odd combination of the length and the step taken, and there would be some overlap when it goes past the end and has to cycle back to the start within one of the other steps, and that would extend it and provide some extra variance, but it turns out that's not the case. The only thing that changes is what happens to the pattern as you're skipping through different numbers of steps, and it just affects how that plays out. What you can do instead in order to gain more variance across a larger number of steps is to stack the stepper devices. However, because of the thing that I just mentioned, the amount of steps taken cannot be the same. You're going to have to have different steps, because otherwise it's just going to overlay the same steps onto the other steps, and you get no actual variance. It goes through the same pattern. So you need to make these different lengths. That's just something interesting I noticed, and I may very well make use of this in the future. At the moment, I don't need more than 256 steps, but... For future videos, yeah, I may start stacking these up. Anyway, to finish this one off, thanks to what I did at the start by removing the re-triggers and the hi-hat, I can now set the seed number in the master track to anything I want, thus affecting absolutely everything that is now being connected to. And away we go. <laughs> 